I, I've had two days. We're taping this. It's like lunchtime, Pacific time. I've had two days to digest this. Yeah. And, you know, it's one thing to talk about in the moment. It gets crazier as yeah. you get more away from it. It's like, it's like Kimmel compared it to the Tyson Holyfield thing. That's, I think that's amazing. I, that is a great, yeah, comparison. that was the same kind of moment. Like where you kind of remember where you watched it. it yeah. Was one of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think ultimately long term, the Will Smith piece of this. Hey, remember when Tom Cruise jumped on the couch yes. in uh, on Oprah's show? Absolutely. And it was like, it was just hard to look at him the same after that. It was like, what happened with this guy? And, yeah. and from that point on, there was an authenticity piece that you would just struggle with. It's like, what's real? What's not real? What, what's going on with this guy? Mm -hmm. And with Will, I, I don't know, man. It, it wasn't just that he hit Chris Rock, but that he was still really mad about it an hour later yeah. and it just seems like he's going through something that's way bigger than a joke at the Oscars. Yeah. It's tough for me. Cause I know both of these guys, you know, I just yeah. worked with Will on a great project called Amend. I, I think I told you about it at the time cause we were over at Sons of God. Oh no, we were at the Netflix lot, but, uh, you know, it was a great documentary. And ironically, I was working on Fresh Prince when Chris Rock appeared on Fresh Prince. So wow. that episode where, like Chris was in drag or something. I would say an unfortunate appearance. This I'll be kind about. <laughs> but uh, so I actually was there when they worked together back in the day. Uh, wow. On Fresh Prince, if you can believe that, you know. And Chris is a good buddy. You know, I've talked to Chris many times. He's, they're both, here's the thing. They're both some of the most, it's, uh, some of the nicest, most generous people generous performers you can meet as people yeah like they're not dicks like i would be the first to tell you man he puts on that image he's a dick no will he really is how he presents himself like he's not mm. inauthentic so it was so out of character for him to do that like i could see him being upset but to do that just really shocked me i'm still trying to process it to be honest with you of the slap like i don't get it I, I just i don't know where it came from maybe he was channeling the richard williams thing because he was saying that in his speech and that which created a whole nother series of problems and issues in terms of right. in terms of messaging because i thought no as he was saying that i'm looking at my tv going no will no right no please don't, don't say that because he was talking about protecting and he was I believed he was removing women's agency all over the place by saying how they needed to pr be protected by him. And it's like, like Anjanu Ellis is a fantastic actress. She doesn't need unset protection from Will Smith. If anything, she's creating a safe environment for him to be dangerous in his acting. You know, well, you know, because she's so good, you know. The thing I wish I had said Sunday night, because Kim and I talked about it right after. Right. And I, I hit like 85% of the points I wish I'd hit, but the thing watching it over and over again, as as a lot of people did, like Chris Rock's hands were behind his back. That yeah. was like, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It's really glaring the more you watch it, where just like in general, like, do you punch somebody whose hands are behind their back? Do you slap somebody whose hands are, like, whether you want to punch, slap somebody in the, in the get-go. But like, if that happened in a sporting event yeah, no, or no, no, any no. other thing, no, no, and no, it's no, like, no. Yeah, yeah, wait yeah. a second, well, what, what are you doing, dude? Here's the thing. In any other environment, the approach itself causes you to go like this, you know, <laughs> like your hand, right. the approach itself. But like, and at first I thought it was staged. I'm like, there's no way this could have, I'm like, there's no way yeah. this could have happened, but then there's no good reason for it to be staged. Like Will doesn't win in staging this. So that's an impossibility. He just doesn't win. And neither does, neither does Chris. N neither. Nobody wins. Win. Right. So there's could, no, there's no possible benefit at all. I think Chris thought that Will was going to say something in the mic. And because when he said, uh oh, like Chris said something like, uh oh, like I got him mad or something like that. I think he thought he was going to step aside and Will was going to say, you know what, motherfucker, blah, 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 say his piece and go back. That's what I think Chris thought. Or, or pretend to hit him or something. I don't think he thought that was coming because no way your hands stay behind your back if you think he's even going to pretend to hit you. I don't think Chris right. thought that part was coming. I think he was genuinely shocked about that. You know, yeah, I think you're right. Well, and then it led it's to impossible um, human nature. You, your hands would just come out, you know? Well, well, we're, we're taping this. So who knows? Chris might say something today. He hasn't yet. My guess is between how it played out on stage, 
Will's speech an hour later where he didn't apologize and kind of made it seem like mm-hmm. this is what then Will's at the party dancing and then Will doesn't apologize. He got apologize a standing ovation till, from Tim. Yeah. And doesn't apologize till basically, I don't know, dinner time the next day, which it seems like at least partially he apologized because he was taking so much shit. Mm-hmm. And because um, maybe he was worried, his team was worried about, they might take your Oscar if you don't say something. Right, right. And Chris still doesn't say something. So knowing Chris, who's, you know, one of my favorite comics mm-hmm. ever, I'm Mine guessing too. now he's like, all right, my win for this is I'm using this for my tour and fuck this guy. And I'm going to do, me, I'll, I'm going to turn this into material for when I go out and I'm going to use this for me. And I'm not, it, I'm not going to help out Will Smith, basically. I don't know. I don't know. I I have to do some more digging to find out. I don't know if Chris is that cold about it, you know? I honestly think it was a ad lib and I I don't think he knew about even the alopecia in the moment. I don't think he did either. Um and I didn't by the way, I didn't know about it when I, I saw actually her didn't know about head, it. Either. I was like, why why is it why does she have a shaved head? What's is that like a new look? What's yeah, going she's on? She's looked and like then, that before too. And by the way, she looked yeah. fantastic. She looked awesome. She did. Um so there and like I said, there's so many levels to this too, Bill. Like Chris did what his job was. He wasn't right. out of turn with what he does. Like Amy Schumer spent like a whole minute saying how unfunny Aaron Sorkin was, you know? Right. I mean, I mean she just went in. That was hilarious. And, I thought she did a good job. And she, oh, she was awesome. And she went after yeah. Adam McKay too, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you analyze the joke itself, it doesn't fit what happened after, you know? Um, I mean, he had three jokes in a row that weren't funny. Chris did? Leading to Will Smith. Yeah, because yeah. like his Denzel thing didn't work. He did the Javier Bardem, Penelope Cruz thing. That didn't yeah. really work. He had forgotten that they had both won awards before. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. and then the G.I. Jane thing, which is like really obscure reference. I got it, but it's obscure you know, and it's also a joke that's been done before. It's not right. a new type of joke. It's you look like somebody that reminds us of a movie is the joke. Yeah. You know, which it, it, that's done a thousand times. So, you know, it's um you know, <laughs> that's not a real good Chris Rock type of joke. No, uh, it, was a, it was a Chris Rock caliber. The better Chris Rock joke is when he said in 2016, where he said he wasn't invited to Rihanna's panties. Now that's a Chris Rock <laughs> joke. <laughs> you know? right, right. That to me, that's a proper joke, you know. Uh, so if they if they came to you and they asked you to mediate this, what would your advice have been to both parties? <sighs> mediate? I mean... I don't know. Like they're We like, haven't heard... Wilmore, but Wilmore, you're a wise man. Come up with Bill, come up with a fix for all of this. We haven't heard from Jada. You know, the I still feel this whole notion that a man has to protect this woman to me is the outdated notion in all of this. You know, Jada has agency. She can speak for herself. She can. I think she said something today, but but I don't think it was anything crazy. But I think she had some sort of Jada has said that she's like, proud of this look. You know, like. Yeah, she posted about, she said, uh, this is a season for healing and I'm here for it. Yeah, I think. That, w- that was her take. I That's think, kind of ambiguous. I think the proper mediator should be Jada <laughs> because she was the one in the middle of it. Certainly not me, who I'm a comedian. I think you know which side I'm going to lean on, you know, if right. I'm going to be mediating, you know, the guy who was doing his job kind of, you know, and I have to do. I have to give Chris a lot of credit, man. He kept his composure. Like, I don't know how many people could have kept their composure like that. It was crazy. My mediation, if they had asked me, would have been, well, you got to say something immediately that that was, you, you was a super tense night for you. You've been through a lot of stuff the last couple of years. It was your chance to win an Oscar to put yourself on the map. My hero Denzel was right there. And there was so much adrenaline that I honestly snapped and I left my body and it's the biggest regret of my life. And I wish I hadn't done that. And I apologize to Chris. I ha- couldn't have handled that worse. Like you really have to go over the top. Why do you think he I did guess, it? Why do you think he did it? I mean, cause it, I think, it, it's I not just think first... he kind of lost it, but why did he lose it? That's the part I don't understand. Like why? Like what? Cause I think so much adrenaline from the night mm-hmm. and from you go into that. He's been campaigning for this for six months. He'd spent all this time on this movie. This is his one chance. 
this is a credibility side, you know, you win the best actor Oscar, you're just at a different level career wise, how you're remembered. Now you're in the club with Denzel and you're in the club with Daniel Day Lewis and all of these great actors. And yeah, but he was nominated. I just think it was too he, much for him. He's been nominated before. He was nominated for Ali, wasn't he? But he had, this is, he had a chance, you know, he's the favorite this year. He's never been the favorite. This was an, this was his one chance. It felt like, cause for the most part, he doesn't pick movies that are Oscar movies. He picks movies that, you know, are box office movies. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's his fault. No, not necessarily. I think you get Oscar movies by having nothing against them, but Oscar ability primarily, you know, uh, you know, well, he's turned down a couple in the past that could have been interesting for him. I think Will is a good actor, but I don't think we put him in the same category as Denzel Washington. No, well, Denzel's one fair. of the greatest actors ever. Right. So it's not like he's not taking Oscar worthy parts, you know. You have But it's it's almost like NBA MVP where, you know, there's the LeBron bird magic section of people who are mm -hmm. just gonna be in the voting every year. And then every once in a while somebody can come up and kind of yeah, Steve Nash. Kind of yeah. Swing punches with them once a year yeah. that that aren't one of the ten best guys. Yeah, so but but he's not playing up to his MVP year, so because mm, he's not really that kind of player, you know. <laughs> is what I think. You know what was interesting too is uh, how everyone reacted in the moment. That kind of stuff is fascinating to me. I was really shocked that he got a standing ovation. You know when he won. You know I right. I know that people, I know that uh, people wanted him to win and they liked him, but. I did the emotions. Standing ovations are usually emotional. You know, they come out of people are feeling a certain way in that moment. Right. Like when you see in like when Liza Minnelli, I think she, I hope she got one. I didn't see that part, but I'm sure Liza coming out, people are seeing her in the wheelchair. They must have given her standing ovation for everything she's done. That's an emotional response. Right. So there's this emotional response to him winning. So that confused me a bit. I was like, what did they just witness here? Like, what time is this? And I'm thinking, maybe they, maybe they were scared. Yeah, I'm like, it could he didn't be, know who he was coming after next. <laughs> well, it could be white people thinking, you know what? This was black on black crime. This really isn't. This really isn't our place to say anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know, stay out, stay out. As, look away. As Diddy said, well, did you we should let video? them handle it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the video? Uh, Scott from Hollywood Reporter had it during the commercial, right after it happened. Mm -hmm wide shot video it's on twitter of tyler perry oh, yeah, and Denzel yeah, calming yeah. down will and then will is walking back to his seat and bradley cooper comes over yeah, yeah, yeah and they like have like this intense 45 second right what like three hugs will's crying yeah and it's just like i can't imagine what it would have been like to be because we've been at that we've been at you know both of us have been at a bunch of awards oh, things. you have that dead time during the commercials where people kind of stand up so the seat goers come in yeah to have that kind of energy happening. Oh, yeah. You got. And they're going like, all right, 30 seconds coming <laughs> yeah. back, 15 seconds uh, coming back. It's like, wait, what's going on? We're coming back. Yeah. And you're Will Smith. I mean, well, Medea and Malcolm X are, you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to. <laughs> trying well, to what do you think? You, you know? So he said, uh, Denzel Will Smith said this at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you was what he said Denzel told him. Right. I thought that was one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard. I don't know if Denzel made that up. Yeah. Did he borrow it from Shakespeare? Man, he, Did he borrow it from... August uh, Wilson, a, probably. A musician? Uh, I don't even August know where Wilson it came probably. from. Denzel's got all that old school stuff, you know. And the way Denzel's eyes were looking too, like, see, motherfucker, I told you, you better right. be careful, you know. Uh, well, some people were pointing out Scientology you know, had something to do with this. And they were talking oh, about interesting. in Scientology, you're told to slap people who like aren't uh, behaving a certain way to you or improper, that type of thing. Interesting. I went down this rabbit hole about that. It was very bizarre, you know. <laughs> you uh, were Scientology slap <laughs> rabbit hole. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, what? This can't be, is that a true thing? Like you slap people or you have to admonish them very loudly and they were saying how Tom Cruise does this on sets and I'm like well but he could just be an asshole movie star too you know they right. do that type of thing uh, well the Denzel piece of it it's just Jimmy and I talked about it on Sunday night it's just it's amazing how Denzel always wins. Oh yeah. Whatever the whatever the room, the situation, he's just the coolest guy in oh, there at all always. times. If all chaos breaks out, because Jimmy told the story about the La La Land moonlight <laughs> yes, when right. that whole thing was going and yeah, nobody yeah. knew what to do. And Denzel was started ordering people around, <laughs> telling them what to do. It's like he 
He just knows. <laughs> oh, he's like the pilot of that. Uh, what was the pilot's name? Uh, oh, Sully. Yeah. Sully Sullenberger. Or Captain yeah. Phillips. He's like Sully or Captain oh, yeah. Phillips. <laughs> yeah. And then Sam Jackson's the same way. He's like, motherfuckers, all right, this, y'all need to come back down. <laughs> you know, he's right. over there just chilling. 